This is the new TYC2790 radiator from Amazon, $108 in 2023. There are several things that you need to check on this radiator. You can pressure test the oil cooler, the two metal lines at the bottom, to make sure that it holds pressure. And you need to tighten the nut that you see on the line on the right to be sure it's tight. The two projections at the bottom of the radiator go into the mount cushions. The oil cooler line here shown pointing up with a black cap on it actually needs to be bent down some. You can wait till you put it in the car to do so. I also pulled a slight vacuum test on this radiator just to be sure there were no leaks, and there weren't. Putting the fan shrouds on, it's extremely close, so try not to bend your radiator fins as you do so. In all my videos, I try to explain in the simplest terms how to do something so people that are not professionals can easily understand. Radiator fan shrouds have weather stripping at the top and the bottom which needed to be replaced and you can find a universal weather strip at Lowe's made by MD or Duck brand at Walmart which works quite well. There are photos of me which I normally don't do but these photos are meant for the love of my life. That's a long story in itself being that I'm 80 years old. So on with the installation, and I hope this helps you install your radiator. This is just a close-up of the two metal lines that go to your transmission oil cooler. Of course, be sure that your oil cooler rubber lines are in good shape. Mine were. So at the bottom, you have the transmission oil cooler lines, also a bracket that screws to the radiator that holds one of the transmission oil cooler lines, and of course you have the lower hose. Remove all the plastic shrouding at the bottom of the car with many 10 millimeter bolts. Remove the front plastic panel with push pins. It makes it easier to install the fan shrouds if you remove the engine cover and the six bolts. This is a really good assortment of push pins from Amazon. The hood latch and the cross member will come out as one piece. Remove this one long 10 millimeter bolt that holds the oil cooler on and disconnect the electrical connector. Remove the 12 millimeter bottom brace bolt and the bottom wiring clip. Remove 10 millimeter screw from each side of the flexible bumper and then remove the 12 millimeter horn bolt on each side. These are the two 12 millimeter bolts on the cross member that goes across the top of the radiator. Two on each side. You do not have to remove this hood cable release clip, as I did. Instead, just pull out on that cable and disconnect the cable at the disconnect. I forgot to take a photo of the entire cross member and hood latch assembly, but this is what it looks like. The two longest 10 millimeter bolts hold the radiator to the condenser. Remove those two bolts, of course. The two radiator fans are held in place by three screws because the center screw holds the shrouds where they overlap. These spring clamp pliers from Amazon, $10, work well where you have room to use them. Where you don't have room, just use pliers and channel locks. Here is the critical thing about using these spring clamps. They work really well but you must replace that clamp exactly as it was on the hose 
or it will leak. If you choose to use a stainless steel worm drive conventional clamp, then you'll have to trim off part of the hose if it's long enough. A worm drive clamp will not work over indentations made by these spring clamps. It will leak. Remove this 10 millimeter bolt that holds the loop for the oil cooler lines. And this shows the connections in this photo. As I mentioned before, this oil cooler line was bent up. You can see I bent it back towards the engine. No problem in doing that. And this is the old radiator. And like I say, it's critical you compare it with the new. Especially making sure your fan shrouds fit the new radiator properly. I had to trim my fan shroud projections where they fit into these slots slightly to get them to go all the way down. This photo shows the two rubber cushions at the bottom that the two radiator projections fit in. This is an excellent time to remove your reservoir and wash it out. I used a little Dawn and water, of course, and part of an old rag stuck down in there, shook it around a lot until it cleaned it real good. Then you can pull it out with a coat hanger or a pickup tool if you have one. New radiator ready to install after I installed the coolant reservoir. A and B shows the oil cooler connection. You put the right fan and fan shroud in first and it can be a real pain. It will go, but it's really close, and it takes a lot of maneuvering to get it in the right place. Try not to damage your fins in doing so. It will clear the oxygen sensor if turned just the right way, but like I say, it's a real pain. The left fan and shroud goes in fairly easy. Then after you have made sure that the fan shrouds are in the correct place, Install your three top screws. I wire tied the oil cooler line to the cross member. These are two of the projections that stick out on the radiator for the fan shroud. You can see here how the fan shroud is not all the way down. I had to trim mine to get them to go in properly. Well, I think I've pretty well covered this. I hope this uh, video helped you and your radiator replacement. I don't use music with my videos anymore because YouTube has hassled me so much, it's unbelievable. Music I own, they give me such a fit over that that I just uh, quit using my own music and I won't use theirs because their music is terrible.